Despite fans not actually wanting the player, the front office was very persistent in trading for Ben Simmons. But in today's video, we're actually going to cover how Ben Simmons inadvertently saved the Toronto Raptors franchise. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody to Amateur Hour Sports. This is your source for everything Raptors from news to mock trades to breakdowns and so much more. So if you're a Raptors fan and that kind of stuff interests you, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. We are on a road to seven thousand amazing subscribers in the amateur hour army but today we are talking about ben simmons and not in the way you might expect because his name is back in the news he has been all over the media going on with this saga this drama that has infused the 76ers organization over the offseason now apparently there is a possible solution coming into play coming into play after Ben Simmons' wallet was starting to get hurt. But nonetheless, perhaps a solution is coming into play. But that's not really what we want to talk about today. We're linking this to the Raptors because the Ben Simmons saga has actually worked into Raptors' favor. I mean, more so the fans' favor. Because Raptors fans... We didn't really have a keen interest in getting Ben Simmons, but the Raptors front office did have significant interest in bringing this player in. And this whole saga started with the NBA playoffs, where the 76ers went in as the one seed, expecting to kind of cruise to the conference final, where they had a likely matchup against the Brooklyn Nets or Milwaukee Bucks. But instead, they faltered in the second round to the five seed Atlanta Hawks in a huge shock. And a lot of people accredit that loss to Ben Simmons, who significantly hindered the performances of the 76ers in the playoffs based on his inability to shoot. The Hawks exploited that by fouling Simmons everywhere they could, even as he was bringing the ball up to court to force him to hit free throws, which he could not actually hit. And it went all the way to Game 7, where Ben Simmons passed up an open layup to a Matisse Thibel who got fouled and then missed one of his free throws, ultimately leading to the Sixers losing in 7. So, much was said about the liability that Ben Simmons brings to your team in the big games in the postseason. And I would very much agree with these assumptions as every time I've seen Ben Simmons in the playoff, he's not that key factor that changes games despite being paid like one of those key factors. So I kind of agree that, you know, the 76ers should consider moving on from this player. But the 76ers were adamant that they were going to keep a hold of this player. For some reason, Daryl Morey decided they are not going to trade this player. But the Raptors, I mean, Masai, he sees what he likes. He window shops. If he wants it, he is going to go all out to get it. And he decided he wanted Ben Simmons. So offers were submitted for Ben Simmons and Raptors fans were a little bit confused. I asked the community at the time, do you even want to trade for Ben Simmons? And 81% of you said that you do not want to trade for this player. But the Raptors, the front office, they persisted. They wanted this player, which led to Daryl Morey bringing up one of the worst trade offers in the history of the NBA because the Raptors who wanted Ben Simmons, Daryl Morey said, OK, we'll trade you Ben Simmons, but you have to sign and trade Kyle Lowry. You have to trade Fred Van Vliet. You also have to trade OG and Anobi. And on top of all that, you have to trade the fourth overall pick, which eventually became Scotty Barnes for Ben Simmons straight up. Masai probably promptly hung up that phone and the Raptors, maybe it seemed like they were going to move on. We went into the draft. We got our guy, Scotty Barnes. I was like, okay, there's no way we're going to want a guy like Ben Simmons anymore because Scotty Barnes is a little bit of a similar player to Ben Simmons. But no, the Raptors continued to push for this trade to happen. But Daryl Morey remained on his stance that they were not going to trade Ben Simmons. And it seemed like for a period of time, the Raptors they backed off from any sort of trade because Daryl Morey, he was giving us these ludicrous prices for Ben Simmons, these prices that no team would take. I mean, they got some good offers. They got a good offer from the Spurs and they got offered Malcolm Brogdon in the first for Ben Simmons, and they ultimately turned these things down. So the Raptors, they didn't want to go through this huge price to get Ben Simmons, despite Masai Jiri clearly wanting this player. And I feel like at the time, Masai Jiri was prepared to pay up quite a bit in order to get Ben Simmons on this team. I did not want that to happen, so I was happy when the Raptors started to back off. But everything changed when Ben Simmons made his stance clear, because the entire time, the way the Sixers have maintained leverage is that Ben Simmons has never come out and said he wants to leave. So the 76ers can hold leverage on this trade negotiation by saying that they don't even want to trade Ben Simmons. So if we are going to trade him, well, we're only going to trade him for a very big asking price. But once Ben Simmons chimed in, because clearly 
He did not want to be there all along. The 76ers lost all of their leverage because they had to trade the player. It wasn't a case of, you know, they didn't want to trade him. It wasn't really their choice anymore. Ben Simmons wanted to get traded. So the Raptors reinserted themselves within these negotiations because Masai Jiri saw an opportunity to lowball. And I'm sure the Raptors did just that. They sent in some lowball offers, which we don't know the specifics of. The 76ers promptly turned down those offers and Daryl Morey maintained that they wanted to solve this thing. But then things got worse. Ben Simmons continued to hold out. Ben Simmons continued to speak ill of the organization. And that's when players turned on him. Joel Embiid turned on him and talked about how, you know, Ben Simmons may have hindered the performances in the playoffs. Doc Rivers said that maybe you can't trust Ben Simmons in those sort of games. Maybe I'm oversimplifying the comments, but there were negative things said about Ben Simmons from players and the coach. So, it seemed like any solution to the problem was not forthcoming. But the Raptors, you know, with those low ball offers, even fans at the time did not want to bring in Ben Simmons. And the reason fans like myself do not want to bring in Ben Simmons to this team is because number one, the high asking price. You know, I can understand wanting Ben Simmons on this team. He's a DPOY finalist. He is a three-time All-Star, though I don't necessarily agree with him being in all three of those All-Star teams. But looking at his stats as a very young player in his first four seasons in the NBA, you would expect a player to grow over the course of their first four playing seasons. It seems like every player who is at a high level right now has improved year after year. But Ben Simmons, when you dive into the stats, it's really a flat line. He really hasn't done anything to make himself better, and he really hasn't shown improvement. If anything, if anything, there is maybe a slight decrease in his production on the court, which is absolutely ridiculous based on the amount of money that he is going to be making. Ben Simmons this season is going to be making $33 million. The next season, he's going to be making 35. That goes up to 39. And in the final year of that contract, he's making $40 million. I rounded to the nearest million for all of those projections on the contract. So Ben Simmons is making this absurd amount of money showing that he doesn't really want to get better because if he wanted to get better, wouldn't he have shown it? Ben Simmons knows that his free throws and his shooting are the problems with his game. Has he ever shown improvements in the regular season? Absolutely not. So is there a lack of drive within this player? That is also something that makes me not want to trade for him. And when I asked you guys again, after Ben Simmons asked to get traded, and the offers from the Raptors maybe didn't have to be as high, 82% of you this time said you don't want this player. So the Raptors, they're going against a lot of what the fans like. But no, they've done that before. And ultimately, usually, I'm going to say you got to trust Masai. Because when it came to Scotty Barnes, most of us didn't want Scotty Barnes. That included myself. But now we're over the moon with this player. We are enamored with this player. We love Scotty Barnes. So maybe if a trade went through, our opinions would have been different. But ultimately, based on all the factors I've seen, based on all the stats, based on the money, I don't want to bring this player into the team. And I was very nervous for quite a while that the Raptors were seriously going to overpay for this player, which is not something I was interested in doing. And I was also nervous of even acquiring this guy and having to take on that contract for the next few years. Years. I don't think I have ever seen Ben Simmons in a playoff game where he has been the difference. He has been the guy that wills his team to a series victory. This Philadelphia team, amidst this process that they're going through, they seem to be at the end of the process here. They seem to be like as good as they can get. The best they ever were, they had Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, Joel Embiid, and Tobias Harris. But problems within the organization that were from Ben Simmons needing the ball too often ultimately led to the departure of Jimmy Butler, who definitely had interest in staying there, playing with Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons stopped these things from happening. Ben Simmons has been, I think, one of the halting figures in this process. They haven't even gotten to a conference final yet. Can Philly get there maybe this season? Yeah, it's it's possible, but I don't think that they're up there with the best like the Bucks and the Nets in that conference. I think a lot of this has to do with Ben Simmons and all of these things combined make me think that he's not a really great fit for a Toronto Raptors organization on the rise where there are a lot of young players who need the ball more. We've only seen just a scratching the surface of what OG and Anobi can achieve when he is at the forefront of the offense more often. He's getting the ball more often. Do we want to take those sort of things away by putting the ball in Ben Simmons' hands? Do we want to take away touches from Scotty Barnes by putting the ball in Ben Simmons' hands? That's something that I don't particularly want to do. And this is why Ben Simmons save the Raptors. Because without all of this drama going on, 
I think that the Raptors legitimately would have tried to make a trade here. I think that it's possible they would have overpaid. I don't really want to think that Masai Ujiri would go that far, but it's possible. And if the Raptors had overpaid for a player I don't think would help the roster, that would have been a huge problem. So inadvertently, Ben Simmons, by causing all this drama, stopped the Raptors from trading for him. And I think that saved the franchise from having to deal with this guy's presence on the court. And now there's all these things going around that, you know, Clutch Sports is trying to resolve everything with the Philadelphia 76ers. Personally, I'm not really buying it. So there's either two things going on here. So the first thing that could be going on is Ben Simmons wants his money and he can't get his money if he's chilling in LA, not playing for the 76ers. That makes sense. You got to work in order to get your money. But I think that the actual thing going on here is that Ben Simmons and the 76ers have decided, you know, Ben, we can't trade you without leverage. If you're not here with us, we have no leverage. We cannot trade you. So I think the situation is molding into Ben Simmons has to be there to get traded. It's kind of like the Goran Dragic situation. Goran Dragic, I mean, apparently he was misquoted, said so he had higher ambitions than the Raptors. But we can't trade him away without him being here, playing well, and showing that he is an integral part of any organization. That is going to give him leverage in order to get traded. So Ben Simmons in the same boat. They are creating this narrative that they're trying to resolve things so that teams are now more inclined to give more for trade. That's what I feel like is going on here. But ultimately, I think Maury has his standards set way too high for any sort of trade, and therefore nothing is going to materialize out of all of these discussions. But all things considered, I don't want Ben Simmons' this team. There are over 80% of you watching this video who apparently also don't want Ben Simmons on the Toronto Raptors. So even 76ers fans, I mean, they are turning on this guy as well. So ultimately, I'm happy that all of this has went down and we have not made a trade for this player. I think it would have been a problem to have traded for him. You know, I'd have to obviously see it to believe it. If we did trade for him, you know, I'm going to support my guys wearing the Toronto Raptors jersey, no matter who it is. So I'm going to support the guys on the court, but I'm happy I don't have to be the one supporting Ben Simmons. Ultimately, after all the things that happened, Ben Simmons may have saved the Raptors. We owe him as fans a thank you for creating all of this drama. So what's your opinion on Ben Simmons? Do you still not want him on the Raptors? Let me know in the comments down below because that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please give a like on the video if you did enjoy. It helps us reach some new viewers. And also, if you want more of everything Raptors at least four days a week, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. And on the screen right now are the other channels we have. The Amateur TV channel is where I do vlogs. I'm going to the Raptors game tonight. I'm going to vlog and post that vlog tomorrow on that channel. Make sure you're subscribed to check out that video. And on Amateur Clips, we do a post-game show for every game plus a lot of other fun stuff. Today, we're putting out the reaction to me doing the Raptors hot sauce challenge. We'll see you again next time for another video.